Hi, right, my name's Phil. All right, talking about politics. So another discussion about the antagonism between different groups that should be working together against the Conservatives and against Brexit, I'm afraid. But I just think this is too important to talk about. Essentially, what I'm seeing around social media today is rejoiners not exactly getting what we're wanting, acting in a way that actually makes it impossible to even get back on the path to becoming an EU member once again. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So anyone like myself who keeps tabs on major pro-EU leaders in the UK will notice that many are now attacking Starmer for his Brexit position in the votes in Parliament today. Fair enough. I've said I thought it unwise myself. But the problem is the way they're doing it. So then Starmer said today, or he probably said it yesterday, I read the report today, that he wants to look forwards, not backwards, and that Brexit is backwards. He doesn't want to be discussing Brexit anymore. He's even said he does not want Europe to even be on Labour campaign literature. He doesn't want Europe to be part of the discussion at all in the general election campaign of 2024. Now, Rejoiners have predictably gone off their nuts, but I think I think they're being a bit blinkered in doing so. There's a few things to unpick here. See, if you really believe Starmer is getting it wrong, here's what you would do, okay? You would look at the reasons for his actions and you would go, okay, that's why he's doing it, but I think you'll find, if we apply some logic here with some evidence, that it won't work. Then what you do is you explain what you would do differently and demonstrate how that makes more logical sense. This is where these guys are falling flat. I've read, even those who've read written articles in newspapers obviously don't expect people to be able to provide, you know, strong rebuttals in, in on Twitter or even on Facebook, although you got a better chance on Facebook, but I don't like Facebook. Um, there's, there's, they're not doing it, you know. They, uh, not a single one of them has been able to say how Strama's strategy won't work because not a single one of them has even given the impression they know why Strama's doing it. They're not even bringing up his reasons and, and explaining why they think they're wrong. So they're not addressing Starmer's reasons for doing so, which basically suggests that you, you haven't got an argument against it, which isn't a good start. Then you look at your own preferred strategy. Again, there are downsides to that, and yet none of them have broached it. Alistair Campbell, I've already said, is the only person I've ever seen even acknowledge the problems with their preferred strategy, and even he didn't have an answer to it. So, unless they're just being shy in explaining, then it looks like they're neither able to say what is strategically wrong with Starmer's position, or what is strategically strong about their own. And just to head off one possible argument, I know some people are going to say, but the vast majority of Labour voters are pro-EU and the majority of the country are. Yes, yes, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not going to swing it. Because that was the case last year when Labour suffered the worst defeat post-war. It wasn't just that the Conservatives still won. Labour suffered the worst defeat since the 1930s. But that was because of Jeremy Corbyn. Yes, it was. That is exactly right. That is exactly what it was down to. Jeremy Corbyn, who was promising a referendum with Remain as an option, a way to stop Brexit. Face facts, a Brexit position does not defeat the Conservatives. A lot of the people who you talk about a majority of people in Labour and the majority of people in the country who would have preferred we stayed in the EU. That is absolutely true, but that is one issue and not necessarily their highest priority issue. For someone like me, that was a super high priority issue. For some other people, it was as well. Obviously, for people very influential in the pro-EU movement, of course it's top priority, but it's not for others. They voted for a mixture of reasons, as is typical in a general election. They were Because if those people were prioritising their Brexit stance, they would have voted Labour. It not matter about Jeremy Corbyn, he was promising a referendum. We could have killed off Brexit by now. Support for EU membership does not get a party elected in a general election. That's a fact. 2019 was a very painful lesson in that fact for those who needed the lesson in the first place. Then I see an influential rejoiner saying that they're leaving Labour. That's it, I'm, I'm done, I'm leaving Labour. I joined Labour because I thought Starmer was pro-EU, blah, blah, blah. 
Starmer is pro EU. We know that. That's a fact. But do you know what is more pro? Again, it's all about priorities. We're always more pro, and, and he needs to be getting Labour elected, forming a government. Top priority, no other priority, quite frankly. See, in Labour, you've got a whole range of people, as you would in any party. But in Labour, you've got these two particularly large, well-organised camps. A lot of people like me are just bouncing around. We have our ideas, not part of a, a, of a, a faction within the party. No point in giving these factions names either. Uh, let's just say you've got the ones who want Labour to win elections. If that means compromising, that means compromising. Then you've got those who want to control the party, even if it means an opposition. They, they'd like to form a government, but they're not that bothered. They just want control of the party. The latter group can be characterised by the likes of, say, Len McCluskey. Someone close to Jeremy Corbyn. When Corbyn was kicked out of the Labour Party briefly, and then when the whip was not reinstated when he returned... There were Corbyn supporters who were ready to quit the Labour Party in large numbers. The likes of McCluskey and, and others around him strongly urged them to stay. No, don't go, they said. Don't go. Why? They're not getting what they're wanting. Why wouldn't they leave? Because they're not stupid. They may not be strategically that great, but they're not stupid. They understand that outside of the party they have no voice, no relevance at all. They need their supporters, puppets, whatever you want to call them, to remain in the party so that when they have a strategy that requires them to mobilise those members to vote a particular way, that's what they'll do. You know, they, they were defeated in... They wanted to put their puppet, Rebecca Long-Bailey, in charge of the Labour Party. They were defeated in that largely on the backs of a lot of people joining Labour specifically to stop that. A lot of progressively minded people joining or rejoining Labour specifically to vote in that election. Now, if a lot of those people leave and the other camp have persuaded their disaffected members to stay, then what happens? The balance of power shifts back to them. They will eventually topple Starmer. It doesn't have to be this parliament. They can wait for him to be defeated in the next general election because defeated they will be if this infighting goes on. And then they'll install one of their puppets again. Might be Long Bailey, might have moved on from her, might get someone else. And we'll just go back to the last few years. How exactly does that get us back into the EU? Or even closer to the EU? Tell me how that works. Explain that. It doesn't, of course. But Starmer's not doing what I want. No, I wasn't impressed either. The difference is that I think about the strategy. I follow it through and I go, actually, this can work. It's, it's, it's risky, but it can work. So let's look at his statement. So he said he didn't even want to talk about Europe in the 2024 campaign. But hang on a minute. Hold on. The Brexit deal means it has to be discussed then. This deal isn't a permanent deal. The Conservatives are billing it as like, this is now our, our future relationship with the EU. No, it's not. The deal is a short-term deal. It's got dates in it for renegotiation again. It's a, it's a, it, it just covers a period of time of a few years. There are various aspects of it that are up for renegotiation and renewal or abandonment. You can just pull out of it. Up to 2026. It's going to be a massive part of the general election campaign in 2024. Huge part of it. Because the party that wins that election has to renegotiate parts of the deal. Brexit has to come back. It's in the deal. Oh, oh I didn't know that. Doesn't, doesn't Starmer know that then? I think if I know... Starmer knows. But here's the thing. Do the general public know about that? No, they don't. No one's telling them. This is politics. Learn how to play the game or we will never win it. Look at how the Conservatives won the general election last year. It wasn't by promising to, you know, down our democracy or remove all our rights. They did promise to do that in the manifesto. There's an awful lot of tearing down democratic institutions and an awful lot of removal of our rights. They promised that. But that's not what got them the win. Get Brexit done. That was their slogan. That was what they pushed. Get Brexit done. They understood that a lot of people were just worried about the whole thing. They were promised that Brexit would be done. There were a lot of people who go, do you know what? If I could choose right now, I would stay in the EU. But do you know what? I would, I would just like it to be over. I'd rather leave and it be over than drag it on a few more years and then maybe stay. I just want it done. I'm sick of it. They now expect Brexit to be done, right? Imagine how they'll feel 
if the Conservatives bring it back up again for the next general election? Don't you think they'll feel cheated? The Conservatives would like to complain that oh, Labour wouldn't let it go. They just wouldn't let it go, so we're having to do this. Blame Labour. Starmer doesn't want to give them that ammunition. You know, he wants them to be... He wants to be as surprised and disappointed as everyone else in the country that the Conservatives are raking it back up. It's like, hang on a minute. I mean, I said back in 2020 that I want to move on from Europe. I want to look at, you know, Britain's place in the world. Why are you renegotiating it, you naughty little Tories? Why didn't you give us a deal for the long term? What were you playing at? You promised to get Brexit done. Why are you dragging Brexit back up again? I've tried to move on. The country has tried to move on, but the Conservatives keep dragging Brexit along with them. Looks like the only way to deal with this is for a Labour government to come up with a permanent solution. We need to win power. Stop these Conservatives dragging Brexit done. They, in fact, that, that can be their slogan. Vote Labour. Get Brexit done. It's not bloody rocket science, is it? But if people spend their time and energy weakening Starmer's position in Labour by leaving it, all you do is put the Lexiteers back in charge. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I challenge anyone to plot a realistic route back into the EU that does not go through a Labour government. Doesn't happen. And if you weaken Starmer's position, do you think you get a more vocal pro-EU leader in? No, DUL. What you get is a Lexiteer puppet. That's what you get. And the thing is... Sure, I, I think, I've said, I think Starmer's taking too much of a risk. I think it's too risky. I would not have advised him to adopt this strategy. There's too much opposition against it from within the movement that could be damaging. It absolutely risks unity. I say risks unity as if unity exists, it doesn't. But it's, it's not a strategy doomed to failure. It does make sense. If people could actually see it and get on board with it, it absolutely makes sense. It's realistic. But more importantly, if Starmer does not win in 2024, then the path back to the EU is made longer and harder. Don't destroy our chances of rejoining just because we're not doing it as quickly as we would like. Better to get there more slowly than not at all. Leaving Labour as a pro-EU member makes rejoining less likely. Fact. If anything, I would encourage more people to join, people who are not members to join, to make our voice louder, not quieter. Be smarter, because I'm sick of losing my country and losing my future. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.